<laughs> Next up, we have developer and web workers. Uh, give it up, round of applause for developer. Hello, everybody. My name is Developer, or as my mother gave me name, Dushan. <laughs> yeah, well, Developer is more cool, I guess. And uh, I come from Serbia. I'm in Berlin uh, for one month, and I work for uh, this company. It's called Smawa, and we do online loans. Uh, as, so I never thought that working with money is going to be any kind of fun <laughs> until I came here. So it is, <laughs> kind of. So today we talk about the web workers. Um, it's kind of a tricky topic and a weird one as well because it's already 2018 and can you show hands who is using this stuff? Yeah, <laughs> it, it is like that. So I'm senior front-end engineer and technical product owner at Smava, as I said. I blog at uh, www.developer.com and the same uh, I use the same, how to say, the Twitter, Twitter handle. So let's start. Um, this is a bit of a history already. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in the 90s, and for me, like, 10 years ago is always, like, 1999, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah. I mean, but 10 years ago was, like, almost this. And before, before we had this kind of uh, React, Angular, and all sorts of, like, uh, mumbo-jumbo on front end, we needed something in order to support it. And in 2009 actually happened this revolution that people don't uh, know so much or they know, uh, but that I'm not aware of. And it's called JIT, or better say like just-in-time compiler. And on many, many um, job interviews, you will hear this question, like is JavaScript uh, compiled or, uh, or uh, interpreted? And yeah, it is both. <laughs> So when, when some nice people introduced the just-in-time uh, compiler, the whole like, um, performance of uh, executing JavaScript really elevated. And then in 2013, the React came as a result of that, and also as a result of uh, Facebook's try to basically elevate some of the heavyweight lifting to the user devices, which was very nice from them. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So, why web workers? Um, I mean, if in this 2009, something somebody introduced a thing which can uh, which opened the door for like um, cliently rich applications, and then as we all know, like cliently uh, client rich application need to be executed in a browser. That means like single stack of execution. And that's basically, you know, when they say like JavaScript is a single thread. I mean, it's not JavaScript that is single thread, it's just the browser that are single thread, kind of. So even though that you just a few people lifted hands and saying that uh, they use the web workers today, web workers as a web workers, not service worker, are introduced a long time ago. And basically what does that mean? Is that the browser support is super. It's, you can easily use it from Internet Explorer 11 and above. But also, yeah, even though it introduces this like multi-thread support and it kind of fixes the single thread on the front end, it's still not widely used for a number of reasons. So no matter of the async, I can see, asynchronous nature of the web APIs, uh, which was also like a part of uh, Mohammed's talk. And I like, you know, all this web, web API, like set timeout, XML, uh, HTTP request, and so on and so on. Like there are many of them that work asynchronously, but that's not multi-thread, it's just not blocking. What that means is that some functionality is like elevated to the web API, and then once it's finished, it's still gonna to, going to like return to the um, to the main thread or the, this um, single stack of execution. So yeah, this is about the browser and an OJS. Because of these cool times that we live in, we can run the JavaScript on both ends, the front end and the back end. And as you can see, like in this visualization, uh, it, it can give you the information that the web workers are very well uh, supported in the browser. And as they are part of the web APIs, they are not supported in Node.js. 
like at least not natively. That means that, that yeah, because essentially that's called web workers. And the Node.js as itself is like built so that it's is going to be it work in, it, as a kind of a ecosystem on this single thread as well. I'm, I'm just yeah, I'm not going to go deep and, uh, and and talk about the C libraries that Node.js consumes and that, yeah, they can have like the multi-thread stuff, but it's not Node.js, not the JavaScript. So the synchronous code blocks the browser. I mean. Sometimes it can actually block your browser, like literally block your UI as well, not just the uh, execution of the JavaScript. And uh, yeah, it's obvious, uh, yeah, everybody knows, but um, even if you postpone the execution of some calculation, that will not solve your problem, it will just uh, delay the inevitable, you know. Because if you do some async actions and then whatever is returned, you will still, for example, this is the usual uh, API call stuff. You get your JSON, and then you need to parse it. I mean, this parse thing is synchronous. It was always synchronous and still is synchronous. And in, in, if you have like some huge data set, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. And, and I had, a lot, sadly, a lot of bad architecture-styled projects that ended up doing the weird things. So most of the time, what happens is that people on the backend, for any uh, reason, don't want to send you the appropriate format. So you get the data, and what happens is that you need to parse it. Sometimes it's huge, so that parsing is going to block your execution, of course. And then you need to re reorder it, or to reformat it and do also incredibly horrible stuff that I don't accept anymore, luckily. And if you want to use your web workers for that, I mean, please don't. You know, just <laughs> come by to your backend guys and, and f fix this stuff. Don't just patch it up. So we came to the taboo. And when, tab when web workers are in question, the taboo topics are basically DOM, window object, more than less, uh, or the parent object. So in the web workers scope of execution, you cannot access DOM directly. I mean, you can still like pass to the worker whatever you like, but you cannot access it directly, and you shouldn't. That's not, that's not the reason why they started to exist. Of course, there is this like green stuff, so that's the thing that you should do. So in the web worker, you can access the navigator object, of course, which can be useful. I intentionally um, read, like, colored in red this user agent. Because even if you go to the MDN website, you will see, like, thumb down, thumbs down for the user agent, which is super, you know. Because I, I really hope that now, in 2018, people stopped detecting their devices by the user agent and kind of continued, yeah, not started, continued to detect the features of the environment and use whatever is available. So in the web worker, you can access the XML HTTP request. That's important to know. And of course, by then you can, you can do all sorts of like data fetching if needed. But the web worker is not a standalone thing and basically, Within the one web worker, you can load as many as the sub workers you need. And thus, in like theory, you can go nuts with the this like horizontal scaling of your resources and like doing things in like million threads. But you don't do it, please, because if you there is one misconception about this. You can use your web workers in order to elevate the heavy weight lifting, but even though it's not going to block your main stack of execution, it's still going to affect your device um, performance, because at the end, it's just one CPU that does, does all of this stuff. So the web worker or the worker and service worker are not the same. Oh, shit. That's fine. <laughs> So the worker resides in the global scope. 
That means that you can instantiate it from within any place and just by using the new worker, uh, new, key, new keyword on this wor worker object or, or a method. You can have as many workers per tab as you, as you want. This is a very key difference between the service worker and worker. And it's very well supported. And for the service workers, they need to be registered. I mean, the service worker, one service worker needs to be registered via the navigator service worker register. And that means that you can just have one service worker per the domain. And that was the whole idea. Yeah. It's just like having the one service worker that handles all this stuff, which is more than less just, no, I mean, not just, but kind of a proxy for your data and with heavyweight uh, lifting in terms of like uh, caching and stuff. And yeah, you cannot use the XML HTTP request within the service worker. You can use fetch. I mean, I don't know the reasoning. What, what I think that it is, it's basically that fetch is like better. <laughs> <laughs> Because with XML HTTP requests, you will need to write a lot of custom logic or to consume some libraries in order to do some simple stuff which just comes shipped with the fetch. And the uh, support is limited. So yeah, this is basically like one kind, kind of a phone call between the uh, web main context of execution, your like, application, and the web worker. And on the first iteration of like this changing the messages I mean before I start just to say that web workers are all about communication and it's basically just what they do the API is very simple and and all the things that you need to do is to instantiate the object as you see uh, the, the instantiate the, the worker to post some message to worker like to provide some data to it and then on this blue stuff when it says like web worker this this is actually part which is written within the worker itself, within this webworker.js file, you actually just wait for a message. And then you do whatever you like with it. In this case, you just return some method which process it, the data. And then on the main context, you just wait for it. For, uh, you just have a listener, basically, that, that waits for, uh, for a, that return back message and do something with it. And that's it. I mean. Very simple. <laughs> and what are the use cases? Yeah, this is kind of a, a topic for itself. Because if you want to move your unresponsive code to the web worker, like don't do it, please. Because it's just going to, you know, it's just like putting uh, trash be be below, how to say, the, uh, the carpet, yeah. <laughs> I mean, eventually your wife will come and <laughs> then you're screwed. So, yeah, repacking slash reformatting of data sets, more or less always lazy backend. So don't do it on the front end, please. Even if you elevate it to some like uh, application state, Redux, Mobix, whatever, and then you do this heavy stuff uh, within the worker, it's still horrible. Like you just should not do it. And yeah, like I said, it's going to affect your UX which is like very important and it's, I mean, the multi-threading is not about heavy weight lifting, it's just about not blocking your main stack. So imagine that you have this um, e-commerce solution and you have a button that says like add to cart and then you start some heavy calculations, no matter what it is. One of our colleagues had this use case where he basically they needed to scan the QR code. And when you scan the QR code, sometimes it can, you know, just consume a lot of resources if you want to do something with it to process it and stuff. So what they did is the, that they thought to put this in a worker because if you scan this stuff and it needs to, to do something which can endanger the, the, the usage of your um, current execution stack, and if it just gets stuck on the stack executing, if you click on this button to add to cart something, a product, that action will need, of course, to update some state and then to just, you know, uh, 
push the changes throughout your application. So when you click to this like add to cart button and this stuff is going to continue executing in the background on your stack, you will not be able to, to do it basically. So in this modern age of like e-commerce, it's not only about having the like fastest page load time, it's also about never ever have this situation when you block your execution stack with anything. And yeah, at the end, basically like if you want to terminate a worker, you can do just this simple thing, worker or terminate, and that you do, you do it uh, from the main contact context of your application, or you can do like self.close, also close to use this method for the same purpose. Okay, so this is like the, the very simple, you, uh, like a very simple example. It's not fancy in some like React uh, framework or stuff, it's just like pure JavaScript, nothing special. So what do we do here is that uh, the only thing that you need to think about is this calculate primes. Actually, I took this uh, method from the MDN, and what does it do? It's just doing some horrible stuff, like, like doing basically the random calculations. And yeah, it's, it's very horrible. So basically, you just want to make your CPU artificially go crazy. And yeah, here I just did a, on min on load. I just waited for four seconds because I wanted my web page to be at least at some point like responsive. So if you reload the page, we can like see how it updates, and then it doesn't. I mean, I'm still clicking, and nothing happens because the heavy calculation started. And I, I can do this, and if I'm a user, you know, I would just say like, oh. This doesn't work, like, and I would press like ten times, and then I would just stop, and then maybe close the website, and then there is no uh, purchase or stuff. So, how you can fix it is very easy, and in this case, we can just remove this horrible code and replace it with a worker. So you basically instantiate a new worker, it, this method accepts a path and then you define a message to be posted to the worker that's basically just kind of some kind of object and here you just wait for worker to return you something. Simple as that. So if you go to our web page and we reload it You will see that basically I can click all day long. Yeah. And it works. So I'm not going to lie to you, like there is not a magical answer on like what what are the use cases for it. And that's one of the reasons why people don't use it. Is that I mean if you if you need to use it, you will know. Or maybe you will be wrong by knowing it. <laughs> because the thing is that most of the time, people, if they write a good code, it will not end up in a situation where you need to solve it by the worker. But in some specific scenarios, if we have in mind the limitation of our smartphones, especially, we should consider elevating something, even like the API calls, to the worker. Because it's all about not blocking your uh, stack execution and basically nothing else. Thank you.